Haswa buun kran ya kapang halor ke jing keno badon ke jing le shi leang haka eksemen Mingalaya Public Service Commission MPSC Nak bawan ra ya ka call attention notice Kat kum ke kai port kubor ban yok jubab Ka basyai no menteri rangba ke jela u kondrat kia sang ma Haka sengi besar ku dorbar senrai jongka yeng dorbar tau an ke jela Haka arpuk kondai terik nai lar arja arpusau Uba Arden Miller besayu mat u MLA ke Voice of the People Party Ula tertik ya ya ki MLA ki ba wat hadin bala kut ke election MP Lok Sabaharu Kidang ya keren ban penbut nam seni ya ke VPP Uba Arden ula ong baga VPP kam dan jingmut ban nyalamba kala ya ki samla dak ba dawa penbet ya ke state reservation policy bat benrap bah ke jing sisha ke sorka jela ke dai ban don ke jing etrai lang bat ki MP Lok Sabha ki ba mikmat ya ke jela na arteli ki parliamentary constituency ke ta na tura bat selong Halor ke pang jong ke jing kenok bom khot ke MPSC ha ke penlong ya ke eksemen thungkam kum bala sei madan ke khasi students union uba arden mela besayo mat bla dawa ba ke commission ke dai ban penlong ya ke eksemen thungkam ha ke rukom ke basai bat ke ba khlam sha si liang khmat kum ban shukdo ba ke migalaya public service commission MPSC ha ke phra tarik nai lar arja ar pusa ke lakular ha khmat ke khasi students union ban palat pat ba ki marks jong ke bia khon ya ke migalaya civil services MCS preliminary examination ke komisen lingba ke jingtho ha ke janbiet jong ka khandai tarik unai lar arja arpsau bala soi do chief controller of examinations mpsc shlong kala su lang ya ki roll number ki marks ki bala yo ha ke sin pen bait baningkong bat kum jo hadien ke jing pen bait ke ba ar ke badan ars pa pra punyo sla kumban shukdo ba ke tai ke jing kular ha ke janbiet jong ka pra tarik unai lar arja arpsau kala ur long hadien ke jing wan tur ha ke wat ke ba ar da ka ksu ban dawa na ka commission ban pen bait ranti ya ka company ya examen bat ban sei madan ya ki marks ke ksu kala wan shakmat ka office commission haringkat ki plakat ban pendam jur ya ka rukam tray kam haringkat ke jing kena ba ka dan ka kam bam sap ka balam ranti sha ke jing thung kam bam khut haswa ke jing ekran kala dan ru ke jing thang ya ting shop kum ke jing pendam ya ke jing kuman ka commission We have seen uh, recently in these days that the Meghalaya Public Service Commission has been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Uh, it was way back in 2015 or 16, if my memory proves me right, that I had raised this issue in this August House, where I had made suggestion before the government how to insulate the Meghalaya Public Meghalaya Public Service Commission from political interference and ensure fairness and transparency in the functioning of the MPSC. However, those suggestions were not taken seriously by the government, which is why we are now in a situation where people, especially job seekers, have completely lost the trust and confidence and the credibility of the MPSC. As it is, the MPSC is no longer an independent body. It is being controlled by political masters and this has resulted in the total failure of the MPSC to render its mandated service to the people. Before I go on to, with my submission, I would also like to convey a very clear and loud message to all those who are insinuating us, the boys of the People Party, that we are raising this issue of MPSC not to hoodwink or to mislead the job seekers, as being insinuated by few members of this August House, that the reason for the boys of the people to have raised the issue of reservation policy, the review of reservation policy, is to mislead the youth. We are not indulging ourselves in that kind of politics where we will just mislead the people. Sir, Madam, I mean to say, I am greatly amused with some of the MLAs who are so obsessed with the voice of the People Party especially after the MP election. What I feel is that they must learn to accept defeat gracefully and respect the mandate of the people. Their continuous insinuating against us is amounting to undermining the wisdom of the people. For us, the election is over. The MP who won from 
our party is not only the MP of the Voice of the People Party. He is the MP representing the Shillong Parliamentary Constituency. And for us, we want to see that there, ha that there should be a proper cooperation between the state government and the MPs representing the state so that we can follow up many developmental schemes. After the election, we don't discuss electoral politics. So therefore, sir, this is a very loud and clear message to those who are insinuating repeatedly against the voice of the People Party. Madam, we have been uh, witnessing that uh, the notifications issued by the MPSC from time to time were inconsistent. For example, on the 2nd August 2019, its notification says that the number of candidates to be called to appear for the main examination shall not be more than 10 times the number of vacancies declared. And for the personal interview, the notification states that the variation ratio shall be 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 2.5, depending on the number of posts advertised. Again, on the 11th February 2022, notification is the same formula, I mean the same formula was applied, which is 1 is to 10 for the main examination, and 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 2.5 for personal interview. However, on the 18th July 2023, a notification was issued which says that the number of candidates to sit or appear for the main examination shall not be more than 15 times the number of vacancies advertised. And for personal interview, the notification says that the ratio shall be 1 is to 1 is to 5 of the declared posts. This action, sir, on the part of the MPSC does not inspire the confidence in its functioning among the people at large and the candidates appearing for various positions advertised by it. Sir, further the action of the Commission to declare the, MP, the MCS preliminary result twice and that too after a gap of seven months further erodes the credibility of the MPSC. It also shows the unfairness on the part of the constitutional body to cater to the demand of a particular candidate to change the result which is unprecedented. Sir, we understand that this is a very hot topic in these days, which is why most of the job seekers, they tend to leave the state, not having confidence on the conduct and functioning of the MPSC. So, there are a few suggestions which I would like to reiterate. They are the suggestions which I have made in this August House. If we really want to make the Meghalaya Public Service Commission an independent body, insulated from political interference, we must put in place a system. I have few suggestions, as I've said, and I'm going to reiterate those same suggestions, sir, which I've made. And number one is the need for creation of confidential section in the MPSC to deal with confidential matters. For example, setting of question papers so that responsibility can be fixed in case of leakage of questions and other wrongdoings. Number two, the creation of moderation board to check and moderate question papers so that error, mistakes, and defects in the question papers can be detected. Three, sir, panel of question setters in different subjects, especially for class one posts, to ensure the prevent and prevent leakages. Number four, max for personal Interview for posts with written examination should be around 12.5% of the total marks as provided by in the Supreme Court decision and judgment. Number five, sir, ratio for selection of candidates in the preliminary uh, 
for the main examination should be 1 is to 10 that is 10 candidates for one post and number six ratio for the personal interview should be 1 is to 2 that is two candidates for one post number seven ratio for interview in post that does not require written examination can be determined by the commission so I am also sure that the chief minister and all of us who are here must have received a petition submitted by the Kasi Students Union who have recently spearheading the movement, the agitation against the functioning of the MPSC. So I feel, sir, that mentioned around 20 points. So I would like to urge upon the government to seriously look into those 20 points and consider them for the complete revamp of the MPSC. So with these few words, sir, I resume my seat. Haba juba, umentri rang ba ka jalau kondrat kis sang ma da ka bakular ba ka sorkar kan shim kya ban pen bait yiki kendrom kendram ka MPSC ula ong. Ba ka jing kenno ba ka kuon u sekretari MPSC ka soy persya ban say madan yaki maksi ka day ka babakla. Kumban Shukro, Bakatai Kakun, Secretary, Kalashak Kano, Bakadai Bami, Hakatoba R, Junkie Papas, Yaka MCS Preliminary Exam, Kata Hadian Balapan Bet Biang Yaki Jing Bakla, Balakam Daka MPSC, Balaong, Bakadai Ru, Kabalasha Jet, Hakapos LDA, Lingbaka Result, Balapan Bana Dunction, Daka Commission. Mr. Speaker, sir, the news item in question is related to the Megala Civil Service Preliminary Exam conducted by the Meghalaya Public Service Commission, which appeared in the Shillong Times dated 4th of August, 2024. In the news item, it was alleged that the daughter of the MPSC secretary was among those objecting to the KSU's demand for marks disclosure. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me, for the benefit of the honorable members of this August House, present the facts and the circumstances and the response of the MPSC on the issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am to state that there is no nepotism and no favoritism in the Meghalaya Public Service Commission as alleged in the newspaper report. A, sir, the Meghalaya Civil Service preliminary results. So the results of the preliminary examination to the post of Meghalaya Civil Service, which was advertised in February 2022 and July 2023, was declared on 15th of December 2023, wherein a total of 580 number of candidates were declared to have qualified to appear for the mains, main examination. One of the candidates who did not clear the preliminary examination, requested for marks obtained and the cutoff marks on 19th of December 2023, to which the MPSC furnished to the candidate the marks obtained by the candidate and the cutoff marks obtained by the candidate. The candidate then requested for answer key for general studies paper one, which was then provided by the MPSC. The same candidate then wrote to the MPSC again, stating that the official answer key for three questions were incorrect, and therefore he is entitled to claim six more marks as he had selected the correct options. Taking action on this matter, MPSC had then requested an expert to examine the matter, to which it was found that the contention of the candidate was correct and that the three answer keys of the MPSC were indeed incorrect. The MPSC had then sent for re-evaluation of the OMR sheets for General Studies Paper 1. And in order to ensure fairness and do justice to the complainant, as the official answer key was wrong, decided to give opportunity to the candidate who had petitioned and others 
who had not filed petition. Hence, the MPSC wide notification dated 23rd of July 2024 came out with an additional list of 62 candidates who were declared to have qualified the preliminary examination. In this notification, the MPSC clearly clarified that since that the court since confining the fresh selection to the appellant alone would be unfair. I'll repeat, sir. Since confining the fresh selection to the appellant alone would be unfair. Applying the doctrine of equality, all answer sheets were reassessed and the instant list of successful candidates securing the cutoff marks has been arrived at. So which simply means that though the answer key was applied or requested by one candidate, but when the MPSC found out that it was actually incorrect answer key and what the candidate had applied or had uh, replied was in fact the correct, the benefit of that mistake was given to all the candidates, even those who did not complain about it, which is the doctrine of equality. In fact, to allay, my, allay any allegations and to ensure full transparency, the MPSC released the press note on 26th of July 2024, wherein it stated that as outlined in the notification dated 23rd 7, 2024, instead of offering relief to only the petitioner, the doctrine of equality was applied to all 13,000 451 candidates for reassessment of the three questions only while keeping the remaining questions intact out of which 62 fresh candidates secured the cutoff in addition to the 580 candidates of the first list are declared to have qualified for the MCS main examination after the release of the second list of MCS a memorandum was submitted by one NGO, wherein apart from other issues, it was recommended that the marks of all the candidates be made public. Another letter signed by six persons stated that they did not want the disclosure of marks where one of the signatories was one, quote, A. Marak, unquote. After this anonymous letter was sent to the NGO by a group of candidates who have declared the preliminary exam of the MCS examination, who had cleared the preliminary examination of the MCS examination, and whose roll numbers appeared in the first list of successful candidates of the preliminary examination, this letter mentioned that there is one candidate named A. Mara who is the daughter of the secretary of MPS, who is also the one who raised objection against the public disclosure, marks secured by all the candidates. This appeared in news items above, wherein the news report mentioned, about, mentioned that six candidates, including the daughter of the MPSC secretary, objected to the public disclosure of marks. Sir, it may be clarified that the daughter of the secretary of the MPSC, her role number does not appear either in the first list of 580 candidates or in the second list of 62 candidates declared later. Hence, the question of nepotism does not arise at all. And the letter and the newspaper reports are factually incorrect and should not have appeared without verifying the facts from the MPSC. Sir, this is a very serious matter. And I must mention this on the, floor of the, uh, on the floor of the house out here, that because of speculations like these by certain newspapers, it leads to a lot of confusion and unnecessarily creating this kind of confusion among the public and also tarnishing the image of the MPSC. Whereas the entire call attention is based on nepotism, this line itself clarifies the fact that the individual concerned was not there in the first list, nor was there in the second list after the marks, the additional marks were given. 
So where is the question of nepotism? Where is the question of, uh, of uh, asking the, uh, the answer sheets not to be given by that particular individual? Sir, it is very unfortunate, I must say, that because of news articles, irresponsible news articles like these, the individual candidates have to go through a lot of psychological, uh, psychological stress, and at the same time, the MPSC also, the image of the MPSC also is tarnished. As I said, this entire call attention has no base simply by this one line that mentions that the particular individual did not qualify at all, whether it was in the preliminary uh, in the initial list or in the second list. So to ensure the full transparency, the MPSC, uh, via letter number MPSC slash X, uh, EXC slash 2021 slash dash 22 slash 148, dated 9-8-2024, made public the marks of all the 13,451 candidates who appeared in the Megales service, civil service preliminary exam and also corrected answer keys. So there was also a news uh, item later, also stated that the individual concerned had been selected in the LDA post conducted by the commission, the results of which were declared in the month of July. So it may be informed that the daughter of the secretary indeed passed the LDA exam, and she ranked 77 out of 116 candidates. The mere fact that she qualified for the LDA exam that was declared on the 16th of July 2023 does not mean that there is nepotism. The question papers are set by a panel of experts and the entire process of setting of papers and examination is a confidential process that is handled by the examination cell of MPSC and not the secretariat of the MPSC. In fact, sir, the fact that even in the answer key, if you looked at the, my reply, when I mentioned that three questions, the answer keys were incorrect. Uh, this again, sir, is unfortunate, I must say. But it is again showing proof that the MPSC and the Secretariat does not interfere. The process of the examination papers being set is completely independent and was done in an independent manner. And the Secretariat or no other system can ever check and yes, there are mistakes made, and this mistake was made because of which this entire confusion started. But the fact that this happened, though unfortunate, is a reflection of the fact that the setting of the papers is a completely independent process. Sir, uh, when the results were declared on the 16th of July, 2023, there was no allegation of any irregularity and nepotism, sir. This issue arose only because of the MCS exam, which has been clarified above, sir. So hence, it would not be fair to link the two issues, and there is no rule barring the children of the staff of MPSC to appear any of the exams. Having said that, to avoid any involvement of those handling the examination process, the MPSC follows a process wherein a certificate stating that no relation is taking the exam is signed in advance so as to avoid any conflict of interest. Mr. Speaker, sir, the fact that the government has taken steps to implement various reforms in MPSC so as to make it more efficient and to speed up the recruitment process. The government in the personnel department, at personnel and AR department, has released an SOP for time-bound recruitment, standard operating procedures on steps required to be taken for intimation of vacancies, issue of advertisement, conducting examinations, declaration of the final results, and issues of orders of appointment. This SOP applies to MPSC, district selection committees, and departmental selection committees. The SOP provides for timely intimation of vacancies and states that all departments, HODs, and offices 
shall intimate the anticipated vacancies to the recruiting agency's bodies six months before the date of superannuation of the employees concerned. Further, the advertisement of vacancies now have to be done on time. The SOP states that the recruitment agencies shall notif notify the advertisement forthwith or within period of one month in local papers and also online. Further, the SOP to provide for doing away with scrutiny and provides that in order to expedite the conduct of the examination process, the recruitment agencies shall allow all applicants to appear in the examination and that the scrutinization of relevant documents shall be taken up only after the candidates have cleared the screening test written exams. This is to prevent unnecessary delay in the exam process as in some cases scrutiny of applications used to take as much as six months or a year to, due to vast number of applicants. Further, the most important reform initiated as per the SOP is the time-bound conduct of exams. From now on, all recruiting agencies, that is MPSC, DSC, or the De Department Selection Committee, shall declare the results of exams within a period of six months from the date of advertise, issue of advertisement. This SOP has to be regularly monitored by all administrative secretaries and HODs, including heads of district subdivisional level offices who shall submit a quarterly report to the personal and AR department. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, very important, sir, because uh, we have realized that the overall recruitment process has uh, been delayed for numerous reasons. And uh, as I mentioned a few points, in the last uh, six years, a uh, few of the very important reforms, like I mentioned here, the SOPs that we have come up with. So you'll be surprised to know that many, many departments, they uh, you know, take a lot of time uh, to inform about the vacancies that are there. And uh, because of these uh, vacancies that are not informed to us, many promotions, many recruitments are actually left pending uh, because of the entire process not being informed to us. And hence, what this SOP does is it makes it mandatory now for every department to inform us six months before anybody is about to superannuate so that the necessary procedures can be done in a time-bound manner so that the promotions are on time, the recruitments are on time, and the vacancies are not there in the future. Sir, I'm very sure that once this particular process is followed in a proper manner, we will find the recruitment process being very, very smooth. We will not find any delay in promotion issues. We will not find any delay in the vacancies. Today, there are a large number of vacancies that are there uh, which are pending for many, many years. And it is after this step that has been taken, all this information now is coming to us, sir. And I'm happy to inform the House that strict instructions have been given to all the recruiting agencies that in a time-bound manner, the recruitment of all these different vacancies must be completed. So you'll be happy to know that the Police Recruitment Board has already started the process of recruiting 3,000 police personnel. Similarly, in the uh, Home Guards Department, the process has started. Similarly, in the Education Department, the process has started. Similarly, in the Medical Department, the process has started. Similarly, in the District Selection Committees, at the district level, the process has started. So things are now on the right track. And I'm pretty sure that in the coming months and uh, hopefully in the next 12 months, we should be able to see a complete streamlining and majority of the issues in this particular case of recruitment and promotions should be resolved, sir. At the same time, sir, what is very important that we have also done is that we realize that MPSC, which is a very efficient body, is also overburdened, sir. And therefore, uh, we have started by creating different recruitment, uh, department recruitment selection committees and boards. For example, in the education, we have introduced a new recruitment board. We've introduced it in medical uh, and in police. So these three, which are the major 
recruitment agencies or departments, recruiting departments. Now they can conduct their entire recruitment process on their own. And hence, MPSC is now focused more on the, uh, you know, the grade one and uh, grade A and the other uh, uh, officials uh, uh, posts that are more generic in nature. And hence, that has also streamlined the process as a whole, sir. Uh, I also am happy to inform you, sir, that two major points are being discussed very much in detail by the government. And uh, one is to have common exams when it comes to the same scale and the same grades. So this is something that we see as a way to ensure that individuals do not have to apply multiple times and give multiple exams. If there is a particular engineering uh, qualification that is there on the same grade, there is no need to have a separate exam for the engineer of PWD and the engineer of uh, uh, some other uh, department where the qualifications are the same for all these engineers. So a person would only give a post uh, examination for engineer. Otherwise, there would be a PH engineer's examination, there would be a PWD engineer's examination, there would be irrigation department, uh, education uh, uh, department, uh, irrigation uh, departments, engineering uh, uh, things. Now, we are, concerned, we are considering on a very, very serious level, sir, and I'm very sure that it will move forward, that we are going to have the recruitments of the same grade and the same scale uh, and qualification, I'm sorry, uh, for the same post. Uh, but of course, there are, we cannot do all of it in one go because it is complicated. But we will start the process. Wherever it is quite obvious and smooth, we'll be able to move forward. So the second very important uh, uh, issue that the government is very actively uh, examining and considering is the interviews, uh, especially in uh, uh, grade uh, 3, grade 4. And this is something that uh, the government is, as I said, ex actively examining this issue. Uh, we have discussed this multiple times in the cabinet. Uh, there are certain issues that we need to look at, certain reforms that we need to make. Uh, and uh, we are in the process of uh, examining this aspect also. Apart from that, some many other uh, small, small reforms that are there. I have taken the note and suggestions given by the honorable member also on the reforms that he has, he has suggested. And on the different uh, applications and letters and recommendations and suggestions I've received from different stakeholders, from different uh, NGOs, uh, and different individuals on how we could make uh, the MPSC and the overall selection process better, sir. So to conclude, let me assure the House that uh, we as a government are very, very committed to, to ensure that whatever recruitment process that takes place in the state should be free, fair, transparent and done in a very speedy manner, sir. It is in the interest of the youth of our state, and we've always maintained as a state government that the youth is one of the top priorities of the state government, sir. So therefore, with that assurance, sir, I once again thank the honorable member for raising this very important issue and assure the House that uh, we are looking into all the different aspects that are there to continuously reform the selection process. And as I said, but once again conclude by saying, sir, that this article that came out uh, regarding the nepotism in MPSC, sir, is a very unfortunate and a very sad uh, you know, outcome because uh, this is completely baseless and completely incorrect based on the points that I've mentioned to you. But nonetheless, sir, it has given us an opportunity to relook into the process and ensure that we are able to strengthen the overall process of recruitment in the state, whether MPSC, whether district selection, or any other, uh, any other selection processes. With these few words and clarification, I would like to resume my seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Arden Miller you may seek one clarification. Uh, sir, thank you for the exhaustive uh, reply uh, of the Chief Minister. So, sir, why these problems keep uh, rising and the mistakes keep taking place? We have to accept the fact that there is no proper system and uh, as I've mentioned in my suggestion that till today I know that there is no confidential section. I've come across one uh, person who is a question setter. He told me that I wonder how the candidates know that I'm a question setter. So these type of things happen. So which is why we need a confidential uh, section to deal with such cases. Sir. So sir, I think we, the government needs to seriously take up uh, measures to ensure 
that these mistakes should not repeat in the future, sir. Thank you for the assurance of the Chief Minister. Kumno baraju? Kumno ikong? Ale ale ale. Kumno ki kam ki jam baro? Ha, ki biang lor. Ai ki ration jong menta ubnai. Ha, ta. Ba, u khao iu unia. Kong u dei u dei khao plus F, u khao fortified. U khao fortified? Henry ba, u khao fortified ba u to ba ai barabor u ya phair iu. U to u khao ba ai barabor um dei u ba ba. Kong, kini ki jing bam ki bangi juba man ka singi ki khta ya ka koj ka khia ka jongi. Manda ngi dei ban sngau tu hi ba ka jing bam ki bangi bam ki long ni em ki ba tei ya ka met ka phat jongi. La dang ngi ba mi ki jing bam ki bom tei ya ka met ka phat jongi. Ila ban yo ya ka jing pang du nas nam ba ka jing priya ki khman. Hendrai ba uni ukhau 45 dan jing dei kum no. Yo i ya ka jing tei ya ka met ka phat ka jongi nak jing ngi bam ka bangi bam man la ka singi kum ka iron folic acid vitamin B12 iodine zinc Vitamin A bat vitamin D. Namar ke jing duna jong kine ngen ngat hagi babun ke jajing pa. Ka sarkar ka prasangkar bala banuan ra ya ka koj ka khia. Ka FSSAI ka batha ba u khau ata kamlu ka dot bat ke om khyang bam. Ki dei ban don ya ke jing bam ki bat dei ya ka met. Khnang ba ha ka shis ni ngila ban yo lipo ka dot san po persen kini ke jing bam ban dei ya ka met. Bat Lai kerteng yaki 45. Ila abang itu yaki tak kasap plus F haki. Ba, uni ujung bang plus F pat ngila abang yau ne eh. Nang ni kong. Naga ni kedau ke sorkar. Kalau penmi yaki skim, ICDS, MDM, PDS. Kabah naga benda upai ba. Ke sorkar mi kalau mangker pang, haga jengi trelang bat kudukan. Naga bah kila pa dau kau bah hatam naga benda kiki kena bat kilong kimi kiba armen. Dei na kata kadao, batang da uni ujat kau, bab hatam, ban sam syabarok kilong yeng. Nang ni syakman. Tang da ukau, 45. Ba, pikiran ya ke jing shisha. Lawan Raksha Pee Lingba ke Office Jong Commissionerate of Food Safety, Meghalia.